Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. So we talk about socialism on this show a lot. And, you know, a lot of people, uh, mainly on the right, but also the left, think they, they equate socialism with, you know, the totalitarian Soviet Union. You know, socialism is communism. It's this oppressive regime. And it's like, no, socialism is just about workers owning the means of production. It's about uh, everybody getting <laughs> a fair share. And socialists helped, were very critical in the labor movement in the 1920s. They saw that the capitalists were exploiting labor. Socialism also was an integral part of birth control. A lot of women were socialists. They were feminists and socialists and helped push for birth control. I didn't know this, right? When birth control was still taboo, early socialists fought to make it accessible to working class women because they knew women's emancipation is at the heart of the struggle for a better world. Again, does this sound familiar? Uh, working class people don't get as good of health care as the, the ruling class does, <laughs> right? That's what they were dealing with in the late 1800s. We really saw, so the Industrial Revolution hit in the, in the late 1800s, and we really saw what the inequities of capitalism can truly bring. We saw it. There was, a, there was poverty before that, for sure. But it started to get worse. And then labor, all of the stuff that you enjoy is because of unions and socialism. So, right? One of the reasons they eviscerated unions was because unions were great at organizing. So unions would also get involved in organizing protests for social issues. This union backs this social issue. MLK knew that, Bobby Kennedy knew that, because they saw that happen in the 20s and 30s. So the capitalists went, oh, we need to get rid of unions. Annie Besant, an early socialist whose Irish parents fled the famine, saw birth control as a means to build solidarity and curb inequality. Here's a direct quote from her. Some say that, that it must be so, that the palace and the slum will forever exist as the light and the shadow. Not so, do I believe. I believe that poverty is the result of ignorance and bad social arrangements and that therefore it may be eradicated by knowledge and by social change. See, we're still starting to get this. This is still happening today. People are shamed. Oh, you, the reason you have you, you work in a shitty job is you, sh you picked a shitty job. Maybe that was all that was afforded you or you should have gone to college. Maybe you couldn't afford to go to college. So they're still shaming people who were born in a tough situation. She saw the social arrangements, right? We think it more moral, she declared, to prevent conception of children than after they are born to murder them by want of food, air, and clothing. Such a great point that this Irish American woman said her family fled the, the potato family, famine in Ireland to come here, and she saw that. So, you know, then they played the moral card, the sin, it's a sin, birth control is a sin, but then what's more of a sin, right? To prevent the conception of children or by murdering them by want of food, air, and clothing. Right? Every time the right wing says, oh, we shouldn't have abortions, okay. Are you going to take care of these children? Is the Catholic Church, when it, when it shames people into, into using even birth control, is the Catholic Church going to help pay for you? And it's, as was said in her quote, and the studies have been done on this, countries and societies that have high birth rates usually have low education. When the education increases and opportunities increase, the birth rates go down. She published this, and she was, this had to go to trial for an obscenity. This was considered an obscene 
right? And they threw every misogynistic, crazy thing at her in court. She won her obscenity case and lost the guardianship of her children. One of the country's first major figure to publicly endorse birth control, she was also one of the first socialist thinkers to count housework and childcare as part of the labor, both for which women should be rewarded and from, and from which they should be freed. This is Margaret Sanger. This is a, let, me, let me backtrack so you don't feel confused. Um, this is a different one. Margaret Sanger was in the United States. Um, that other woman was in uh, the UK, was in Ireland in the UK. She opened, Margaret Sanger opened the first United States, the first birth control clinic in 1916, right? She also came up in labor unions and realized this is how you organize, this is how you protest. Direct action tactics of the industrial workers of the world, the IWW, Sanger had helped lead the 1912 Lawrence Textile Worker Strike and the 1913 Patterson Silk Worker Strike. She worked on two strikes. Sorry, the E got cut off there. That's my fault. <laughs> Strike. This is another quote from, from this woman. Poor working men and women who are overburdened with large families. Thousands of women in the cotton states bearing 12 to 16 children. Thousands of women facing the tortures of abortion, because it wasn't legal back then. 300,000 mothers who lose their babies every year from poverty and neglect. That's pretty bold. They Socialists working in labor unions that had organized strikes, organized the movements to get to get birth control because they saw like women, especially back then, but this is still true in, in many third world countries, their, whole, their only job is to just get pregnant and have kids. There can be no emancipation. This is from another, a German socialist. This man, there can be no emancipation of humanity. The German socialist August Babel wrote in the 1904 book, Woman and Socialism, without the social independence and equality of the sexes. I bring this to you today because socialism is getting a lot of, oh, Bernie's a socialist, you know? Socialism is about equality. It is about, and the capitalists don't want this because that would mean the capitalists would give up their money and their power. This is the biggest wealth gap in the history of the world. CEOs just broke another record. And yet, how are we going to pay for it? How are we going to pay for it? Always ask that. With anything that's good, how are we going to pay for it? How are we going to pay for health care for all? If we had health care for all and good education and free college education, you know, it's so funny that when the, when the like, build a wall, why are they sending all these, they're having all those babies down in Mexico and they're coming here to take our jobs. Well, gee, what if we <laughs> were educating people about giving people opportunity? People wouldn't need to flee their companies. We weren't doing economic sanctions that create refugees, that, cr that help destabilize countries. But I want us to stick with the socialists to get clear on the history of socialism. For socialists today, it is our duty to re-energize our historic role in the struggle for, struggle for bodily autonomy because any renewed subjugation of women portends the graveyard of unfreedom for all. So you think like when Alabama got rid of 25 White male state senators voted to abolish abortion and a woman governor could have blocked it and did not. You think that doesn't affect you? You think that doesn't affect you? 
as a man, oh, well, yeah, it sucks. But if they can take a woman's right to choose, they can, they can tell a woman what she can do with her body. They can tell what you can do with your body, what I can do with mine. That's what they can do. It's like the Julian Assange thing. This might seem like a crazy leap of logic, but it is not. If they can throw Chelsea Manning and Julian Assange in jail for, for talking about the crimes of the United States empire, they could come after me. They could come after you. They could throw you in jail for a tweet you put out there. They could take me out for this YouTube channel. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> the government doesn't get to tell you or anyone else what they can do with their bodies. And let's go back to history. There's so many great lessons in history. And the socialists, as is, many, as is a, uh, an example, <laughs> many times over, led the charge. Thanks for watching the show, everybody. Thanks for supporting what I do. Please, YouTube demonetizes me all the time. I don't know if this is going to get demonetized. It has socialism in the title, so it might get <laughs> demonetized. But support what I do. Like these videos. Hit the subscribe button. Share them out on your social media. Go to rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. You can uh, see all my videos there ad-free. It is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. Also, patreon.com slash Graham Elwood. You get a lot of bonus content there. And come to the Progressive Comedy Tour on the road. Ron Placone and I, September 4th through the 8th, we are going to Omaha, Sioux Falls, Madison, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, Iowa City, Iowa. Go to GrahamElwood.com for tour dates. And of course, we will be in Australia, November 14th, Melbourne, November 15th, Adelaide, November 17th, Sydney, and November 22nd, we'll be in Perth. GrahamElwood.com for all your tour dates. And I'll be at the Minds event speaking on a panel August 31st in Pittman, New Jersey, right outside of Philly. And if you use coupon code GRAHAM, G-R-A-H-A-M, you get 10% off. You can see the whole day of events. There's an after party and you save 10% if you use my name. Thanks for watching.